Welcome back, everybody. Super excited about this segment because, as everybody knows, I have been following this hockey story for a very long time, and I'm hoping that it comes to fruition. <laughs> Scott, joined now by Scott Burnside. He's a freelance hockey writer and broadcaster. I'm thrilled to have you in studio. Hi, Maria. Thank you for having me be here. And it's always a ton of fun to talk hockey, especially when we're talking about the possibility that hockey uh, at the NHL level could be coming back to Atlanta. Wouldn't it be great? I mean, hockey for a third time in the city, in my opinion, could work out. We'll get into why I believe it'll work <laughs> out, obviously. But, Scott, you wrote a really interesting article about could the NHL work in Atlanta for a third time? Everyone knows the last time it was here was the Thrashers. They left in 2011. So it's been a minute since hockey's been here. Scott, do you think it could work a third time around? Yeah, I, I think it absolutely could work a third time and frankly it should have worked the second time yeah. and you know we're not for a, a couple of significant factors including disinterested dysfunctional owners yeah. and, and having an arena you know geographically remote from your hockey market your hockey base conspired to um, you know, force the Thrashers into uh, a departure for Winnipeg in the spring summer of 2011. Um, I think, I think it's an embarrassment, frankly, uh, probably to the league and certainly to hockey people that there isn't a team here, given you know what this city has to offer and certainly sure. the growth in the city since 2011 in terms of the population. It's always been a great economic draw. I think there are 19 Fortune 500 company headquarters here. Yeah. Um, and this is a time, you know, the game has changed since the Thrashers left. The NHL really committed to diversity, to growing the game, to making it more accessible and open to, to everyone. And this is a, a terrifically diverse city and the population is just going to grow and grow. And so if you have the right ownership group, and that means ownership with a ton of money, yeah. and you have a plan to build an arena close to or in the heart of your hockey market, it should go great guts. It, it, it should be a no-brainer. There are two groups <laughs> vying for hockey to be back here in Atlanta. Anson Carter's group mm -hmm. and, of course, Vernon Krause's group. Is it better that we have two trying to bring the NHL back here? Yeah, I think it's interesting that there <laughs> yeah. are two. And I asked Anson Carter that, that very question, a longtime NHLer who's made his home here in Atlanta for a long time and, and really feels passionately about bringing the NHL game back here and how it would work where it failed in the past. And I, I asked him that question and he said, listen, the, people see what I see. So it, it's probably a good thing and reinforces, you know, so the basic principles of, well, what would you do differently if you were going to uh, try and return the NHL here? How do you correct the mistakes made in the past? How do you make sure that the third time would be a charm? And I think the fact that there are two groups, you know, I, I mean, it's going to be interesting to see, to see how it plays out. Um, but I do agree. I think it's, you know, with people who see the potential here, uh, it's not just one group. So um, it will be interesting to see how the two groups, very different approaches, different locations, although, you know, not a huge difference geographically, sure. but, um, and I think, you know, certainly having Anson Carter's strong connection to the NHL, I was watching him earlier today as mm -hmm. uh, they were doing TNT's broadcast, you know, just down the street here, um, his uh, involvement with the NHL's in, uh, equity and inclusion um, efforts, um, his long history as a player, boy, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I think that this is the perfect city to be a part of hockey in a time where hockey is changing, like you talked about. So I'm obviously excited at the prospect of it potentially coming back here, but we know the league can be very quiet when it comes to expansion. They never really tip their hands when it comes to different cities, but there are multiple cities that have said that they want a team, Houston being another big one in the States. We know there are other Canada ones that want hockey back as sure. well. But why would Atlanta be at the forefront, in your opinion, of one of the next to be an expansion team? Well, I, I think all of the things that should have made it a success when the Thrashers were here, and that's, you know, the population and the growing population. Uh, I think the corporate support. Uh, I, I think the, the issue is going to be, um, A, does the NHL need to be bigger than 32 teams? And oh. that's a whole other separate debate. I think you could argue that 32 is a nice round number. Um, but uh, as you know, the expansion fees have continued to grow enormously, and that's a whole different world from when the Thrashers came uh, into the league in 1999. You know, Vegas comes in at $500 million, Seattle's at $650 million, both incredible successes. My guess is the next round of expansion starts at about a billion dollars. 
So that you have, you have to ask yourself, um, who has the wherewithal to invest in that if you're an ownership group? Presumably these two groups here in the Atlanta area yeah. are well aware of what the marketplace is like if the NHL is going to expand again. I think it's a question then, does the NHL risk, because there is a certain amount of risk, if it decides to come back to Atlanta for a third time. I, I, I think the pressure is all going to be on the ownership groups locally to convince the NHL that this is going to be different. That's a different city, it's a different market, the game is different now. Sure. Um, but listen, the history is the history, right? There's, you mentioned some of the other cities, Houston is interesting, they already have a building, um, uh, of course, with, with the NBA team there. And Salt Lake City has been very proactive. Yep. Um, uh, Ryan Smith there with the Utah Jazz uh, making a formal announcement that they would like to have an NHL team moving forward. The NHL still needs to resolve its issue issues in Arizona, whether they're going to be able to find a viable place to have a real big time NHL arena, which is something that has eluded them really forever. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of moving parts to this. I, I think the NHL likes people who are, they toe the line, they don't speak out of turn, they don't make uh, uh, pronouncements, they don't make assumptions, yeah. and uh, you know, in talking to Anson Carter, there's a guy who knows the, he knows the mood and the, and the, and the, the way the NHL works, so you know, it's, it's not a given, um, but I do think the fact that, um, you know, the NHL players right now take no piece of expansion fees, that's a huge deal. So if we are that's talking about a billion dollar expansion fee, which I don't think is out of line to suggest that's where it goes next, that all goes straight to the owners. Now, the current CBA will be up for uh, renewal, uh, new CBA discussions coming after 25, 26, I believe. Yep. Does the NHL then try and get ahead of that by, by going down the expansion road earlier rather than later to ensure that that money goes right to the owners. And I think that's a good sign for the, uh, for the two groups here in Atlanta because NHL owners love money. And this is <laughs> a, a big piece of money that they don't have to share with the players. And probably why those two groups are being very aggressive right now as we speak, for sure. You've been in Atlanta a very long time. You're Canadian born, but this is your home now. Yes. You have a footprint. You have your thumb on the pulse of what hockey is like here. Again, we said it, you were here when the Thrashers left in 2011. What do you think the fan base is like for the NHL and hockey in Atlanta and Metro Atlanta? Because we're really talking about a team outside of the city. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it is interesting. And I, you know, I sort of worn different hats here. I've been a national reporter for most of the time I've been here in Atlanta, which is 20 years or so. But I was very, uh, I was a hockey dad here. My mm -hmm. son played in the, in a number of the local youth organizations here. I was very briefly a uh, coach uh, of one of those teams. <laughs> I owned awesome. a pair of skates. So. <laughs> <laughs> not sure whether I was qualified to, to coach beyond <laughs> owning a pair of skates. Yeah. Um, but, but I think it's a great question because, um, and my friend Jeff Schultz, a longtime columnist here who recently retired. Friend of the show. Too, friend of the way. show. <laughs> but he wondered aloud if the fan base, you know, had been, it's been beat up a bit, right? Yeah. Uh, and especially the, the way the Thrashers left and how that happened. I'm not sure it matters that much. I, I think if the NHL commits to coming back here, that means they believe in ownership. And whether it's, as you point out, the, the gathering, the Krauss group in, in Forsyth, or whether it's Hanson Carter's group at North Point Mall, I think a, the fans are hungering for it. I've talked to a number of actually, you know, former NHL players and former minor pro, pro players who are very involved in the youth hockey um, community. Uh, I know Anson Carter has done a, a nice job of reaching out uh, in a preliminary fashion to try and draw those communities together, something the Thrashers never bothered to do, by the way. Um, so I think, the, I think the hockey community here, it may be small, but it's vibrant. I think it would grow exponentially assuming that a new NHL team takes care of those kinds of details. And that means committing resources and, and, and money and time and effort to grow the game at the grassroots level. I think the way the population is going to grow here over the next 20, 25 years, I, I think it would be a, a roaring success here. You have to do the work. Yeah. and you have to be prepared to pay for it. But I think the hockey community would, would literally come out of the woodwork to support a new NHL team here. Last question, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Is the NHL gonna come back here if you had to guess right now? <clears throat> I say yes, I, but the, here's the, the my, I'll put my caveat <laughs> on it. The timetable of this 
is going to be pretty fluid, I think. Yeah. Again, you know, if the NHL wants to move more quickly um, to try and take advantage of, uh, of taking in all of the expansion fees before it maybe becomes a bargaining chip, um, maybe it happens sooner than later. I think the fact that we are talking about two proposals building from the very ground up here, um, I, I think the NHL is going to be loath to make a commitment until they see you know, so that it, that it's really going to happen. Yeah. Uh, so I think there are some, you know, some some f there is some fluidity on the timeline, but I do think the, the NHL will be back here in Atlanta. Well, Scott, I really appreciate the time. I'm always happy to talk hockey <laughs> with you or with anybody else. So I appreciate your time. Anytime, Maria. All right, guys, we'll be right back.